But early on in this race, one man stole the show, Daniel Do Nascimento, who decided to start the New York City Marathon on not course record pace, but world record pace, Gordon. The man was running through the streets of New York City on 201 pace uh, through the first about 10 kilometers. By halfway, he was 61, 22, well ahead of course record pace, two minute lead. And then it all started to fall apart. Mile 18 he has a bathroom break, which never a good sign, but we've seen people recover from the bathroom break and get back on it. Mile 20, he stopped. And then by 21, he full on collapsed uh, to the ground. Luckily, he was okay. Evan Chabet went right by. And then the race was basically over. I mean, it was two guys essentially running completely separate races. Chabet had broken away from the chase pack. The gap closed between Evans Chibet and Katata by the end to a, a smaller margin because Chibet started to slow as well, too. But if you were tuning in and out to this race, there's a good chance you only saw two people running. Donacimento in the beginning of the race and then Chibet all by himself in the end. I mean, we see this every few races or so. You see someone go for it. And they go for it in a much... Not put himself in it <laughs> to win it, but put himself in an extreme pace. They... You know, they watch a Kipchoge documentary or something there, something the night before and go like, I'm doing yeah, it, yeah, I'm yeah. going for it, and I'm going to run yeah, a 201. Yeah. Uh, and we always say this, it never works out. It never works out. Like, has there ever been a situation where someone running out of their league, out of their mind, out of their typical pace, and it actually works? Like, I think every time we think maybe this is the one time, but whether you're watching, like, uh, a mile, a 5K, 10K marathon, someone who does this, it doesn't work. I, like, why do they still do it? Why is there always someone who bites and is like, maybe I can be the one? Because no one's ever yeah. going to successfully do it. Has there ever been anyone who successfully has decided to go out in, not world record pace, but pace that is beyond your capability and just see if you can hold on? Well, sure, it, it, work, it works sometimes, but you need when? to have a larger margin for error. And you also need to have a situation where if you fall apart, you're not, I mean, you're not literally falling apart all the way to where you can't continue to run. And he, well, his second mile was 420. I know it's a little downhill, but it's just, it's just preposterous. So you knew it was going to catch up to him. Mean, he's a great runner. He's run 204. Uh, he had similar situation in, Sapporo at the Olympics, where he fell to the ground, but he got back up and finished that race somehow. I think this just is how he runs. A lot of people, they're somewhat unaware of where their red line's at. And until they get a grip on that, it's going to hold them back a bit. Because especially in the marathon, you got to be able to stay on your feet. You got to be able to run all 26.2 miles. But I, I just think he doesn't have a sense of where his limit is you'd think though once you saw 420 like on your watch you'd be like all right i'm gonna chill for a little bit that was that was a little hot i got 24 more of these maybe i should dial it back but he just kept going i mean that is yeah, so fast on that course you know but there's times you're in situations in life where it's like well i crossed the line there's no turning back now like i ain't you know can't stop the train now the train's already moving and i think that's what it is like yeah the point of point. it takes yeah. more energy to put on the brakes than just ride the wave and it either comes crashing down which happens 99.9 percent .9 of the time or that point zero 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 one percent of the time you pull off a miracle and everyone says like holy crap you know but yeah it wasn't meant to be it was kind of a little dramatic there when he collapsed luckily yeah, he was okay yeah. but uh hey it created a unique story it got you watching and be like wait is this actually gonna happen? You know, yeah. not even Kipchoge can do that. Like even Kipchoge would fall apart when he goes out a little bit too hard. You know, mm -hmm. so if the greatest have ever do it can fall apart, you know, I highly doubt a two hundred four Brazilian runner is gonna be able to pull it off either. Well, again, there's fast, and then there's what he was doing, which is so far beyond yeah. what we had ever seen. Like you're not supposed to be on world record pace in New York, York City. I'm, 
I remember Katani did it a bunch of years ago, and there was some story about how she was misreading the splits like on her watch. She thought it was kilometer pace and it was mile pace or something like that. But to go out as as quickly as he he did, you had to know it was going to end it. It just we didn't know it was going to end in that fashion. So then, yeah, Chibet right there takes over. They actually had an issue with the lead car that like, got in the way because they were like waiting for Do Natsumiento to get back up, and then Chibet comes by and almost moves over into him. It was a little bit of a precarious situation, but but he was solid. Like I said, fell fell apart a little bit. Like his split started climbing um in the final final miles but i don't think anybody ever thought katata was gonna be able to make up the ground and then abdi nagi gets in there for third the former Olymp- olympic silver medalist you look at this top 10 though and with the exception of dona Cimiento, a lot of it held together especially for the weather being that bad 